Hi everyone, I'm Sean, and today I'm going to be listing my top 10 favorite books of all time. So let's get into it. Okay, the first book is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I find it hard to say exactly what I like about this book that makes it a top 10. The writing is not superb. It's a little bit dry, a little bit wordy, not terribly so. But I don't know, as I read it, I was like, okay, this is a decent book. But my appreciation for it grew as I read it. And when I finally finished it, I realized, hey, this was a pretty good book. So I had not seen any of the Frankenstein movies before reading the book, except Young Frankenstein. I love Young Frankenstein. And I also do a good Igor impersonation. No, it's pronounced Igor. So I read a lot of classics, and I just liked Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I think it deserves all the attention it's gotten. It is a good book overall. And I find it weird I can't really say what makes it a good book. It's just interesting and I just like the way it's written, the way the story unfolds. And I like the character of the monster and also of the doctor. It's just all around it's a good book and people should give Frankenstein a chance. You should read it. So that is number 10. Number nine, I don't have a copy of it, but number nine would be The Hunt for Red October by Tom Clancy. This, I think, was the first Tom Clancy book I read. I think it was actually the first book he wrote or the first book he published. So to come out with this being your first book, I think that's a tremendous job. And I read the book... I don't know if I'd seen the movie before, but I definitely did not remember the movie. So I read the book pretty much blind to what the plot was about, really. And what made that book so good is there's this Soviet captain sailing toward the east coast of the U.S. And no one really knows if he intends to launch the missiles because he's a madman or if he plans to defect. And if you haven't seen the movie and you don't know what he really intends to do that is what made the book so good and so suspenseful because you just don't know is this guy an enemy or is he a good guy and I think the pacing is really well done the characters are really good so I cannot say enough good things about The Hunt for Red October it's a really good book so that is number nine Number eight is a little tricky to decide because there's two books that I think deserve the spot and I don't want to have both books take up spots on the top ten list so I kind of wanted to choose one or the other. The one I'm going with is Airframe by Michael Crichton. The other book would have been Jurassic Park. I won't go into that one for this one. I'll keep it just to Airframe though. Michael Crichton is one of my favorite authors. I think he was either on it or not. He was either had his game going or it's kind of just a letdown. And I can't really describe what makes his book so good, but what I like about them is Jurassic Park and Airframe especially made me feel really smart. Because he, Michael Crichton is a very technical writer, so he's writing about all this technological things and intellectual things or academic things or whatever, scientific things, which for the most part I do not know much about. I'm not much of a scientist. But what Michael Crichton does so well is he makes me feel like a scientist. So like with Jurassic Park, I felt like I could be a paleo... is it a paleo... whatever, a dinosaur study or... And with Airframe, it made me feel like an aeronautical engineer. Just the way he writes, he is, when he's in his element, he exactly answers my questions at the exact moment. 
So I may be thinking, oh, well, what does he mean by this? But then the characters will explain it. And it's not written in a way that makes you feel stupid, like, oh, how did you not know that? It makes you feel smart because I read it and I'm like, oh, yeah, the turbo manual lift, whatever. And I'm just, I can follow along with it really well. And with Airframe, basically the plot is about this plane has not a crash, but has it has an accident while underway. And so these characters who work for the airline industry are trying to figure out what went wrong with this plane. And it's just really interesting the way they're trying to solve what went wrong. And then it's like, oh no, it could not have been this. It had to have been this. But then you find out, no, it couldn't have been that. It had to be this other thing. And it's just really well written. Another thing I'll say about Airframe, you may not want to take a low budget airline flight after reading Airframe. I won't really say much more than that, but I definitely say Airframe is a definite recommended read. Number seven would be Rex Stout, The League of Frightened Men. Rex Stout is a mystery crime writer, or he was a mystery crime writer, and his most popular series is the Nero Wolf series. Nero Wolf is basically this New York detective who is basically, his main characteristics are he is fat and he is pretty lazy. He really wants to keep to a schedule. He's just a very peculiar person. And the other main character is the uh, narrator of the series. That is his sidekick assistant, Archie Goodwin. And really, between the two, Archie is the one who really carries the series. I don't really want to go into the series too much, but one thing about Rex Stout, like I said, it's a mystery crime series, but in most of the books, the figuring out of the murder is usually almost anticlimactic. Birds are chattering in the background. The whole book is, of course, leading up to the reveal of the whodunit. But you don't really read Rex Stout's books for that reveal. Because usually the reveal is not all that interesting. It's usually done in the final, like, five pages. But what makes his book so well is just the way he writes the characters, the way he unfolds the plot. That is what makes the Nero Wolf books interesting. But The League of Frightened Men is an exception because with that book, that is where the plot really does rise above everything else. Rex Stout wasn't the greatest at plotting novels, but he was definitely on his game in The League of Frightened Men. And the best thing about that book is the antagonist. Basically from the beginning, the murderer reveals himself. He says, you know, I killed him. I killed these, this guy or these guys or whatever. And so you'd think that's it. The crime is solved. But it just goes on from there and more people keep getting killed and it looks like this guy has to be the killer. But is he or is he not? And it's just, I think Rex Stout made a great villain for that book. And the plot was just right on. Another thing about that series is that is actually the third book I read in the series. I first read The Golden Spiders, which is like book 17 or 19 or something. Maybe it's even in the 20s. Uh, then the first book is Fur de Lance or something like that. And then The League of Frightened Men is the second book. I would still recommend reading Fur de Lance first, the first book, just so you kind of get a taste of what the Nero Wolf books are like, and then read The League of Frightened Men. They're not too long of books. They're about 280 pages or so, so they're pretty quick reads. So I would recommend reading those two books. Number six is going to be A Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin. So... I had not seen the TV show before trying to start this book. 
I wanted to give the book a try, so I did, and I just did not like it at first. I thought there were too many characters just thrown at readers. I couldn't keep track of everything that was going on, so I just didn't like it. I thought he was trying to do too much. So then I went and I watched the series, and I watched all of it up to the point where Danny is finally sailing to Westeros. I think there's two seasons left after that. I actually have the next season. I don't have the last one, but I haven't watched it yet. I just kind of lost interest in watching the series. And from what I hear, I'm not missing much. But after watching the series, I went back and I tried reading the book and I loved it because I knew who all the principal characters were. It was much easier to keep track of everything when it says the main characters. I know who it is. I know how they fit together. And I was just astounded then at the world George R.R. R. Martin created. The description he put into his books, the world building he did, the characters. It's all just masterfully done. So all in all, I think this book is just about perfection. And I think it is pretty remarkable that you watch this series, Game of Thrones, and you think it had to have been a team of people coming up with all of this. But it all came from the fertile mind of George R.R. R. Martin. One guy thought of all of this series. And that is just astounding. And for him to put all this work into this series, because I could tell as a writer how much work goes into it, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal job. It's really an achievement. So... It's just a great book, and I highly recommend it. If you're having problems with it, maybe it'll help to watch the series first so you can have an idea of who the characters are. The books are a little bit different, not all that much. The series follows the books pretty close, but the books have a lot more detail. So I would definitely recommend A Game of Thrones. And do be patient with it. It is a good book. There are a lot of characters, but it's okay. Once you get them down, it's pretty easy to follow along. Book five. We're already up to book five. That would be The Sea Wolf by Jack London. There were two books I could have chosen by Jack London. The first would have been White Fang. And then the other, of course, is The Sea Wolf. He is most well known for Call of the Wild. I didn't really like that book though. I did like White Fang and I did like The Sea Wolf. Why I chose this book is because of the main character, Wolf Larsen. Wolf Larsen is one of my favorite characters in literary fiction. He is just such an interesting character. His main trait or personality or belief basically is that he is a savage. Jack London wrote a lot about savagery in men, and Wolf Larsen is the perfect representation of that. So it's not exactly an easy book to read. It's pretty long-winded or wordy, and it's kind of philosophical, but it's still a real great book. And there is also a lot of jargon or whatever about ships so it's talking about this sail or this mast or you know this deck i think jack london has an obsession with the words poop deck he uses them a lot i think he just loves that phrase so there is a lot of like sea craft stuff which i really didn't enjoy i didn't think it added anything to the story but still through it all the character of Wolf Larsen is an awesome literary character, and that really made this book what it was. So it may be difficult to read, but I do recommend trying to be patient with it. The first few chapters are also kind of slow, but once you get into the Wolf Larsen scenes, see if you like him. If you do, keep reading. If not, if you're just completely lost, then I'd say go ahead and give up. But I do definitely recommend this book. It's one of my favorites. My top fourth book of all time would be Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. And this is a signed copy and I'm so glad I got to land a signed copy because I think this book is just great. 
Eleanor Oliphant, much like Wolf Larsen, is one of my favorite literary characters. The thing with Eleanor is she is so unintentionally funny, I just love her. Because she just, the things she says and does are just outlandish. And I would say I wouldn't like her because of it, but she really doesn't intend to be a B word or anything. But at times she definitely is. And I just, I love Eleanor Oliphant. She's one of my favorite characters ever. I thought the book was really funny. This book had many laugh out loud moments. It's a popular book and usually I don't like those. It was recommended to me from the librarian. But I am glad they recommended it to me because this really is a great book. And I've been looking forward to her next book for years now. She is coming out with another one, supposedly, but yeah, I definitely am looking forward to it. The one drawback I'll say about this book, and I won't spoil it, but there is something that happens at the end. There's a reveal at the end, and I just thought the book did not need it because the book was perfect without it, but what the author kind of tried to do is throw this twist at the end, and to me, it just did not work at all. So I did not like that, but that is not taking away from the rest of the book. The rest of the book is great. I loved it. It was hilarious. I love Eleanor. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Okay, my third favorite book of all time, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, I know that J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter series has gotten a lot of heat over the years, which is hard to imagine because for years Harry Potter was just so beloved, but now it's the opposite. And I'm probably going to do a video on J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter in the future, so I don't want to go into that part of it. But I will say I did love and I do love the Harry Potter series. I thought it was a masterpiece, except when it got to Deathly Hollows. I did not like Deathly Hollows that much. But the rest of the series is great, and picking a, one book as a favorite out of the series is difficult. But I have to go with Order of the Phoenix. And it really comes down to one thing. In Goblet of Fire, I think Harry Potter became a hero. And in Order of the Phoenix, he really becomes a man. He becomes an adult. And I just really liked that progression for his character. And I thought it was really good coming one after the other with Goblet of Fire and then Order of the Phoenix. First, we really saw him become a hero. And I know he did heroic things in the other books. But I thought Goblet of Fire is where he really evolved as a hero. And Order of the Phoenix, he becomes a man. So anyway, there's not too much I can say now that hasn't been said already. But still, I like the Harry Potter series. And I think Order of the Phoenix is the best book. Or at least it's my favorite because it shows that maturation. Is that the way you pronounce it? Of Harry. Where he's just really becoming an adult. He's becoming a man. He's not a boy anymore. And I just liked it. So that is the third book of all time for me. Number two book of all time would be The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I really did not know what to expect going into this book because I'd seen the movie like years before, but I didn't really remember it. All I remembered was the scene where they drink that, uh, tea or whatever it is and I remembered that scene and I may have of course I remembered the line you know you killed my father or whatever but that's really all I remembered from it but what I will say is the book the first 25 pages or so are kind of difficult to get into because it's talking about this guy trying to track down this book and that part of it wasn't as enjoyable. I kept thinking, come on, get on with it. But once it got past that, 
I just fell in love with the book. I love the humor. I love the fourth wall breaks. The book, Princess Bride, just feels like a book that I would have written. The humor is very much in line with things I would write. For instance, one of my favorite parts, and I actually found it out reading One Star Reviews, which is kind of research for an upcoming video, and someone pointed out this scene where the narrator says something about Paris, and it says, like, this was after Paris, and then it goes on a little while longer, then it says, this was before Europe, and then it goes on a little bit more, and it says, this was after Mears, and it's just so ridiculous, like, Paris exists, but France does not. Paris exists, but Europe does not. Europe does not exist, but mirrors do. It's just so outlandish and so just ridiculous, but I just love The Princess Bride. I thought it was a great book. I thought it was hilarious. Many laugh out loud moments. So that is the number two book of all time, Princess Bride by William Goldman. And my number one book of all time is no surprise if you've seen my three by Moore's video, but that is The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Moores. I have said it before and I'll say it again. I think The City of Dreaming Books is the best thing ever written in the history of humanity. I think it's the best thing any human being has ever done. It's our greatest accomplishment. This book just, it's so perfect. I cannot say anything about it without ex that would be an exaggeration. It's just perfection. You cannot write anything better than this book. I love the illustrations. I love the humor. There's many laugh out loud moments. I will say that the book does seem to lose its way halfway through and just give up on its plot, but it really does not. Everything in the book is there for a reason, and so Number one book of all time, City of Dreaming Books. I absolutely love it. I stand by it. It's the best thing ever written. And over here, you could see I have other Walter Morris books. There's A Wild Bride Through the Night, and then these are also parts of his Simonia series. There's The Thirteen and a Half Lives of Captain Bluebeard, Rumo, The Elk Master's Apprentice, and then The Labyrinth of Dreaming Books, which is the sequel to this book. Amazingly, I have not read that sequel yet, and I don't really know why. I think I'm just worried I may not like it that much, because I'm so worried what could he write after City of Dreaming Books, and I'm just worried it'll be a disappointment. So I'm kind of holding on to that one for now, but yeah, City of Dreaming Books, best thing ever written. And that is my top 10 list. So have you read these books? What do you think of them? Do you think any of them deserve to be on your top 10 list? What are your top 10 favorite books? Let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.